Let's clean the camera and make sure yeah, we're good. There we go. That looks good. All right. Hi, everybody on Facebook. What's going on? So I wanted to hop on live stream for a moment and walk through a few recipes. Okay. I wanted to hop on live stream and I wanted to walk through a few recipes. I want to make sure we give folks enough time to get on. Okay, I think we're cooking. I mean, you know, literally, we're going to, but I think we're cooking. I think we're good. Okay, cool. Um, so, I do not have anything um, really planned out. This is going to be, hey, y'all. Hey, what's going on? Oh. Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So I don't have anything planned out, per se. This is going to be um, one of those winging it ones, you know, where we just sort of wing it. Uh, that's what we're going to do, okay? So I got a couple of things. Hey, 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 everybody. Happy Wednesday. Hi. Everybody's getting on speaking. <laughs> JP Justice. What's up, man? From New York. How are you? I hope everybody's good. All right, so I'm gonna be wing, I guess I'm gonna wing a couple of these recipes. Um, ideally, what I wanna do is I wanna get some photos, obviously, for um, social media, but at the same time, I do wanna walk through some of the recipes. So I guess, you know, if you're taking notes, grab your pen and paper. Um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do in a second, but first, um, I had my groceries delivered to make it easier for me, so I wanna show you what I'm basically unbagging out of the grocery. So I picked up some drumsticks, right? Because you can have, never have enough recipes with drumsticks. And this is actually for uh, the cookbook. So I'm going to be doing uh, recipes for my new cookbook coming out soon called 101 Ways to Cook Chicken. So this is for that. Um, cream of chicken soup as well is for that. And I got some mayo. I'm in the south now, Atlanta. So Duke's mayo is like the mayo to have, right? Okay. Also, I picked up some croissants, all right, which is going to go for uh, a croissant cornbread stuffing with a roast chicken that's going to be for the cookbook as well, okay? Uh, speaking of the roast chicken, here is Le Bird right here, okay? So this is going to go on the side. And then here's what we're using for now. So I picked up some frozen peaches that have kind of defrosted. And then I got a little bit of fruit for a salad for later. So this is uh, red grapes and then these are um, Fuji apples, okay? So let me put the apples over to the side. And let's see what I wanna get rid of real quick to make my space nice and clean. I wanna get rid of these. I'm going to put these in the pantry, so bear with me. Yeah, no farmer's market this time. I know, it's crazy, right? I just grab stuff from, like, the local grocery store. I don't always shop at, like, farmer's markets, and I don't always shop um, at fancy places. I just don't have time <laughs> to always do it, you know? So... I think it's okay sometimes to, you know, run out to your local grocery store. Plus, I want to show you that these recipes are super approachable, um, even with regular grocery store stuff, okay? So, let's do, really quickly, a bottom crust, okay? Let's do a bottom crust for this peach and white Hennessy cobbler. Now, the other day, what you did see me do is you saw me make this pie dough two days ago. Okay, the recipe, I'll make sure I put it up at DariusCooks.tv for you so that you guys can grab this. This is the pie dough that I made. It's super cold and firm, so we got to work with it a little bit as our top crust. But I'm going to show you a real cool trick, right? So, let's make the bottom crust for the peach cobbler because I feel like that's what's going to be super important is that bottom crust, okay? Top crust is nice, but the bottom crust will taste even better, okay? So in a bowl, I'm gonna do a quick 
uh, a quick dough, real simple. So I'm gonna put a cup of flour in a bowl, and then I'm gonna also drop in a pinch of a pinch of salt because we need to make sure this is flavored and seasoned good. So flour, salt, and then obviously to sweeten the match, a little bit of sugar. Okay, a little bit of sugar. Not a whole lot, but you want the dough to taste like something, okay? So let me grab a spoon. All right. All right, so this is gonna be our dry ingredients. Real simple, right? Flour, sugar, salt, all right? I'm gonna get some butter, and this is room temperature. It's fine, it's fine. It can be room temperature, I know what you're saying. Okay, normally you want everything nice and cold, and this is cold. Okay, this is nice and cold. Like, this is super cold. So, uh, but for this one, we're going to do room temperature butter. So, if I use the cup of flour, I'm going to use uh, a half a cup of butter, right? And you can certainly eyeball. You can eyeball this. I keep the butter out at room temperature just because I always use butter for lots of things. So I'm gonna put in about a half a stick of butter. And I'm gonna use my hands to sort of just combine the butter and the flour together, all right? And so while I do that, uh, and just, just get it combined, right? So I'm using my hands. While I do that, what I wanna do is uh, have you get a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. All right, folks. So that's it. See, look, what I've done with my hands is I just wanted to combine the flour with the butter and there's some sugar and salt in here, right? And so the way you know that you're sort of cooking here is that when you grab the dough, right? When you grab it and you hold it in your hands, it kind of holds its shape, right? That's how you know we're in a really good state. So if you were making like shortbread or like shortbread cookies, this is all you would need to do and you'd be there, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of water in here because the water, water, cream, milk, whatever you have will help the whole thing sort of come together. Actually, I might have like some cream or something in here. Let's do that. I got cream in the fridge, right? So remember this now, you can always uh, add to this, but you can't take away. Okay, you can always add to it, but you can't take it away. So we want to be careful with the amount of liquid that we put in. So I'm going to start with like maybe, you know, a good tablespoon. Right. And that's it. And then if we need more, we'll add to it. So I'm going to use a spoon and I'm just going to give this a stir really until this just sort of comes together. Right. And you'll know if you're there. Oh, look, this is good. See, look at this. This is actually perfect. That tablespoon that we put in is perfect. You see this? Because now we're exactly where we need to be. So that was that. Let me put the cream back in the fridge. All right, and let me get another glove. And that's it. See how simple that was? This is going to be our bottom crust, right? This is going to be our bottom, our bottom dough that we're gonna use for our peach Hennessy cobbler. All right, so let's do that. Let's actually put this in the bottom. Look how this looks. You see how this is like, can you guys see that? Okay, good, perfect. All right, you can see this, and you can see how it comes together, and it holds its shape really well, right? It holds its shape really well, Right, and it's good to go. All right, I know the light's a little bad, so I'm sorry about the light. All right, so let's play with our food a little bit and why don't we roll this out? All right, I'm gonna use a smaller bowl now. If you have like a big, um, like a nine by nine or something, use that, okay? But I'm gonna use a smaller bowl because that's gonna look better in the picture. So this is the casserole dish that I'm using, okay? This is the casserole dish that I'm gonna use. And then let me show you. So I'm just gonna flour the surface, right? Make sure nothing is sticking, right? 
All right, here we go. So I'm just gonna roll this out. And I just, it doesn't have to be perfect. So if you're looking for like, you know, perfection, okay, this does not have to be perfect. Cause you just want it to go in the bottom of the dish and nobody's really gonna see this at all. You know what I mean? So, but you just want something that's gonna fit in the bottom. If it rips, who cares? All right, so here's our dish, right? And then, if you pick the dough up, we could sort of lay this right in the bottom of this dish. You see, just like that. And what this will do, I'm just gonna press it over to the side. Again, this we're not looking for perfection here. We're just looking for something, at, you know, like a bottom crust to really sort of absorb all those good flavors that we're gonna need for our cobbler. See, you see that? Very simple. So all we do is we have the crust in the bottom and it goes just like this. All right, super simple, all right? So that's gonna go off to the side for a moment. And let me get rid of some of this stuff. Some of this stuff we're still gonna need, but some of it we can get rid of. So let's get rid of this. And let's wipe this up. Okay, now, so uh, I'm gonna be using frozen peaches, okay? This is something that you can do any time of the year. You don't necessarily have to uh, use fresh peaches, okay? Uh, typically when I was growing up and my grandmother would make peach cobbler, she would use the canned peaches, okay? I'm gonna use frozen, but you can certainly use um, whatever you like. All right, the canned ones are good. The canned peaches work just as well. If you just happen, let me just see. If you just happen to be a place in a place where you can grab frozen peaches, then by all means, get the frozen peaches. Or, or I'm sorry, the fresh. Get the fresh uh, peaches. Because nothing really beats, you know, nothing really beats fresh anything. You know what I mean? Like fresh is always best. And there's nothing like a fresh, ripe, juicy, delicious peach that is just phenomenal, right? But that happens normally in the summertime and uh, it ain't quite summer where I live. It's nice outside, but it's not quite summer. So we can't really do what we want to do, okay? So look, I'm going to put in some butter, all right? Now this is a cobbler, a dessert, so we got to put in a little butter. Okay, let me show you on the stove so you guys can see. All right, so some butter goes in, and then, along with the butter, so do our frozen peaches that I've just defrosted ever so slightly, okay? Look at that. All right, so we've got butter, and we've got peaches. So I'm just gonna stir this together just for a little bit, just until the butter and the peaches start to get nice and happy, okay? Uh, you'll notice that the, the peaches will start to release some of the juice, and that's really what you wanna have happen. You want this pan to start swimming with juices, and we're gonna season this to make it really, really good. So uh, I'm just gonna continue to stir for a moment, and uh, we will be right back. There we go. All right, folks, welcome back. We're doing a peach and Hennessy cobbler, right? If you didn't know what was happening in the kitchen, it's already starting to smell amazing. So if you missed what we're doing in a pan, in a skillet, I've got some uh, frozen peaches that are slightly defrosted and some butter, right? So the reason I'm doing this is because I really want to show you that uh, you can certainly do this any given time of the year. You do not have to you know, be in a situation where you only use fresh peaches. Although fresh peaches are really good. But this process can be done with fresh, frozen, or canned. All right? I stick to the fresh or the frozen. But listen, like I said, when I was growing up on the west side of Chicago, you know, back in the day, my grandmother didn't always have fresh peaches. You know, she didn't even use frozen. She used the canned peaches. So canned peaches will definitely come out good in this cobbler. Right? So the deal is... We want to flavor it 
and season it really well. And that's what's going to give us that amazing uh, peach cobbler flavor that we're so used and so familiar to having. All right. So if you missed out earlier, I just made a really quick bottom crust, right, for our cobbler. It was super simple and super easy. We just threw it together. And the other day on live stream, I made the top pie crust that I'm going to use and put on top. So I'll show you how that goes in a second, right? But while the peaches are cooking up, we got to do a few things to make it taste really good. So actually, I got to go in my pantry because I want to grab some cornstarch, right? So I want to grab some cornstarch. And then also, I'm looking for a little bit of nutmeg, okay? I'm looking for a little bit of nutmeg. So let me see, because I didn't prep any of this. This is like completely like off the dome over here. Okay, here we go. This is off the dome, nothing is prepped, all right? So I'm gonna put a little bit of nutmeg in here. I don't know if you guys ever seen fresh nutmeg before, but it comes in like a, a berry or seed that looks like this, okay? It smells amazing. This is fresh nutmeg. So we're gonna grate some fresh, you get them in a jar, Right, just like this. So we're gonna grate fresh nutmeg in there. And then cobblers need some citrus. So I've got a few squeezes of some lemon as well. So we're gonna make this taste really good. All right, let's take a look at it because we're gonna start seasoning the, the cobbler. Look at what's happening. Look at what's going on right now, right? See what's happening is we've got peaches that are cooking up in butter and they've released a little bit of their juice, okay? We're going to help it out and I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this, a little water, okay? Now, now we're starting to get where we want to go with this, all right? So let's put in some cinnamon, right? This is just ground cinnamon right into here, all right? And then let's give that a stir. Ugh. Immediately, like, let's put this down on like a medium heat. Immediately, that cinnamon gets in here and we know we're home free, right? We know we're home free. Let's put in a little bit of white Hennessy, okay? White Hennessy is gonna make this taste really, really good. So, white Hennessy goes in about three quarters of a cup. Now, if you don't have white Hennessy, you can certainly use, um, a regular Hennessy or rum or tequila <laughs> or whatever. It don't really matter. <laughs> okay. And then let's grate in some of this um, zest or some of the nutmeg rather. So this is a microplane and here's the nutmeg, right? So we're just going to grate some of the nutmeg in here. And the nutmeg is going to give it a really amazing flavor. All right, now this definitely needs some sugar, okay? So we're gonna add in a couple of cups of sugar, about a cup and a half. You know you know how sweet you like it. Remember, this is a, dirt, a dessert, it's a rich dessert. We're gonna balance that sweetness by putting in a little bit of uh, lemon juice as well. So it's gonna give it a real nice freshness to this. Now I'm using peaches, but listen, this whole thing could, you can go with um, apples or you can go with pears or all that good stuff, okay? See, so look, there we go. So nutmeg is in. All right, I'm just gonna stir so nothing sticks here, all right? All right, let's get in some sugar. All right. Just a little, <laughs> just a little bit of sugar goes in, all right, to our cobbler. A little more. And then two more things. A pinch of salt needs to go in here, okay? Let's just give that a stir and get the sugar nicely dissolved. I think I've got some vanilla uh, somewhere. Let me grab some vanilla. I'll tell you what, I gotta find the vanilla. I don't even know where the vanilla is. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let me look for the vanilla, right? And then I 
We'll be right back in about 20 seconds. All right, welcome back, guys. Guess what I found? I found the vanilla. So let's put in a little bit of vanilla, all right? And you can't really go overboard with the vanilla. The more you put in, the better this is gonna taste, right? So this is like already smelling good, looking good with that white Hennessy in there, all right? Now let me get some lemon in, in there. All right, now I really despise when there's a peach cobbler with fresh lemon and they put the seeds in there, okay? Now, you know, there are certain times when I'm a little lazy and I don't really care about the seeds, but then there are certain times when it's like, you know what, I care about the seeds. So today, I care about the seeds. So I'm going to cut open a lemon I'm gonna grab a fork and I'm actually gonna juice the lemons into a bowl. This is one of the only times you'll probably ever see me do this. Typically, if I'm using lemon, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care about there being lemon seeds and stuff, you know, like pastas or whatever. But in this case, I'm a little particular about seeing seeds in a cobbler because you might add ice cream and stuff to it and then when you bite down on it, it's just not the tastiest thing in the world. You know, so if you get a seed or two in, all right, cool, whatever. But a bunch of seeds just ain't what's up for me when it comes to the cobbler, okay? So let's add in the juice without the seeds, and then I'm gonna recap for you so you can actually see. Now look at what's happening. Can you see this on the stove? Look at this, look at what's going on on the stove. Do you see how this is bubbling, all right? and getting nice and happy. That's because we got all those really good ingredients. Let's add in some lemon. That's gonna lighten the whole dish. Now this is the juice of about two lemons. It's gonna lighten it and make it taste amazing. Well, there's a seed, we lost one seed. But one, one seed isn't bad, okay? I'm okay with one seed. Now, this is a little loose to me, you know? It's a little loose. So we wanna thicken this up. This, this juice is amazing, but we wanna make sure that this cobbler sort of really hugs um, the spoon, you know? We wanna make sure that this cobbler really does good things on our tongue, and what makes it really good is when you have uh, a nice, luscious sauce, right? Now, there's only one way to achieve this lusciousness, okay? Cornstarch, all right? Cornstarch will get us that nice, um, luscious, thick sauce that we want for our cobbler. Ain't nothing worse than like a loose cobbler. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing worse than like a loose cobbler. Like, just take the extra step to make sure the cobbler is nice and thick, you know? So we're gonna do that. So I'm adding some cornstarch to a bowl. You can't see it, hold on, let me show you. My hands are like a mess. You can't see it, but I'm gonna show you. All right, so I just added cornstarch. This is just cornstarch to that same bowl that I just used uh, to squeeze our lemon into. I'm just gonna put cold water in here, right? This is a couple tablespoons of cornstarch, a couple tablespoons of water, cold water. All right, let me show you, just like this. And I'm gonna mix this together. I'm mixing the cornstarch together with the water. This is called a cornstarch slurry, all right? And we use this to thicken sauces and stews and soups and chowders and the whole bit, okay? So the key to, do, to making this and doing it right is equal parts cornstarch, equal parts water, and then you just wanna make sure that whatever you're adding this to is pretty hot, like to the boil point, you know what I mean? Where it's boiling and then we're good to go. And we can definitely see that our cobbler is boiling. So before I add this, let me give you a quick recap on what we've done. So I'm just doing a white Hennessy and peach cobbler, right? So it's basically peach cobbler with the volume turned all the way up, right? 
So I am using frozen peaches because regular fresh peaches just aren't in season. If they're in season where you are when you make this recipe, by all means, please use your fresh peaches, okay? If you don't have peaches, pears could work in this, apple could work in this. Um, you know, you could do uh, nectarines or apricots. All those really good stone fruits uh, will definitely work in this same application. The, the thing that makes this so special is it's the white Hennessy and the lemon, fresh squeezed lemon juice in the cobbler that takes it over the moon. Not to mention, we're not making shortcuts here. We're literally using a bottom crust that we made from scratch and we're going to do a top crust as well. Okay, so we're doing a few more things to really juice it up. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna thicken what's on the stove. We just sauteed some peaches with some butter, a little bit of water, and we season it really well. A little bit of sugar, some salt, because salt helps bring out the flavor. We put in some vanilla, okay? We put in some cinnamon and a little bit of nutmeg. You don't wanna go overboard with the nutmeg, but you wanna add it, okay? We, you wanna add it, but you don't wanna go overboard, because too much nutmeg will taste like soap and we don't want that all right so before i add this to cornstarch slurry to our our sauce to thicken it um i want to take it to a quick break and we'll hear from our lovely sponsors hey welcome back okay now let's go ahead and add to our sauce look at our sauce look at this loveliness that we have on the stove can you guys see just how amazing this looks you see this it's bubbling and it i i could i could smell it you know doing its thing let me taste it real quick just to make sure all of our flavors are singing to us which i know they are but i'm gonna taste it just to be sure you know because there's nothing worse than you know you've done all this work to make sure that our cobbler is going to taste amazing and then you taste it and it's like what is that, you know? So let's see. It's hot. This is real cooking. It's perfect. The white Hennessy comes through. You taste it in the sauce. Not only that, that lemon, there's nothing like that fresh lemon in a cobbler. I'm telling you, if you don't add fresh lemon to your cobbler, you're doing yourself a serious injustice. It brightens the whole dish and brings it to a level that you just, it's amazing, all right? So let's, let's juice in this cornstarch slurry, all right? And watch what happens to our luscious sauce. I'm gonna jack the heat up just a little bit, okay? And it's already boiling, so we're gonna add a little bit to this, like a tablespoon and a half. Let's see where we are in terms of consistency. Now look at what immediately begins to happen with that cornstarch slurry, okay? The, the key to a good cobbler is a nice, luscious juice, you know? That sauce, man, has to be really good. And if you look at what just happened, we basically just thickened up this sauce just like that, okay? Do you see that? That's how you know you're in hometown, okay? When this begins to happen. When that happens, you know, you're good, okay? You're really good when this happens, all right? Look at that. You see that? <laughs> we can kill the heat, all right? We don't want to cook the peaches to death because we've already done uh, a really nice job on bringing in some really good flavor, all right? I see folks asking about my cookbook. Uh, here it is. The book is called Stories from My Grandmother's Kitchen. So if you don't have a copy of this amazing cookbook, you can get it today by going to DariusCooks.tv, okay? So it's called Stories from My Grandmother's Kitchen. It's available at uh, DariusCooks.tv, okay? So you can grab the book there, all right? Now, let us talk about this top crust because before we... Uh, Add this to the oven and let it do its thing. We got to put a top crust uh, on our peach cobbler. All right, so let me show you. Now, this is the pie dough that I did the other day, and you can certainly find this recipe uh, 
on the video from the other day, but it'll be at DariusCooks.tv in a little bit, all right? So what I want to do, a little bench flour, right? Just to flour the surface. And here's that cold pie dough that we made the other day. <clears throat> All right, let me show you what we're doing with this. Okay, so you can see, and you're going to be like, oh my God, that's amazing. I'm doing this from now on. All right, here we go. All right, so I want to make sure everything's floured, you know, my entire surface because I don't want anything to stick, right? And so what I'm going to do with the rolling pin is just sort of knock down the dough. This is what professional bakers do to tenderize the dough and get it where it's pliable. Because remember, there's lots of butter in this dough. And now that there's butter in this dough and it was in the fridge, what's going to happen is that it's going to get hard again, right? So we just want to kind of work it. And you want to work with a cold dough. But that's how you start out, okay? And the key is you want to make sure this dough constantly, constantly moves, okay? Constantly moves on the surface, all right? So we want to make sure we're looking at where our flour is, make sure we're good to go as we roll out. Because the last thing you want is for this thing to stick and then that won't be any good, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna keep rolling out the dough, just like this, right? I'm gonna keep rolling it out, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So my dough is rolled out, and if you think about where the dough is going, it's gonna sit on top of this, right? So we wanna make sure that we have enough space and enough room with the dough so that it can fit on top of our cobbler really good. All right, now watch this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my fluted edge to cut strips out of our dough. And this doesn't have to be perfect by any means, okay? So I don't want you to think like, oh my God, this has to be perfect, all right? Because it really doesn't. Now, I think two is gonna be plenty for what I'm trying to accomplish, and I'll show you that in one second, okay? First, let's get the peaches in here. Okay? And this juice, you don't throw this away. This juice is going to be great over um, ice cream or served with whipped mascarpone cheese or whatever you got laying around. It's going to be great. So we're just going to try to fill it up. More peaches than juice, right? Which is why that whole bag of peaches was important. Look at that. Mm. Look at that. It smells really good. This has that white Hennessy in there and that cinnamon and the nutmeg, right? And this is typical. You're always going to have more juice left over than fruit. So don't feel bad, okay? You can take the juice and freeze it or do what I do. I get vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I get vanilla ice cream and then I just put this over that vanilla ice cream. Warm this up in the microwave and vanilla ice cream and like butter cookies or something like that on top. It's a great dessert. But all this love and flavor... It's in here. You don't want to lose any of that, okay? At all. All right, let's clean this off a little bit. All right. About to make a huge mess. Okay, so here we go. We have peach cobbler, white Hennessy, right, into our dish. So what I'm going to do is I think two strips would be good, right? So one here and one here looks good to cover, all right? But what we need to do is do a couple of strips this way. So I'm gonna call, let's see, two, 
I think I'm going to call four. I'm going to call four strips, all right? So I have a little bit more dough here. I'm going to call four strips. I'm going to size it just right. Okay, so I think I'm going to call four. Four is going to have to work because four is all I have left. <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to upload this like that, right? And then you see how this one started on top? So I'm going to pull this one back and start this on the bottom. I'm going to pull this one back and start this one here again. And then I got a little space here for one more that I'm going to nudge in there, okay? And look, there we go. Now we have a top crust. So what I want to do is just snip off the edges of our top crust, just like that, that we worked so hard to achieve good flavor and the whole bit, you know? Cutting it off, you know? Plus food should look good, you know? It's one thing for it to taste good, but it has to look appealing to the eye as well. And I love the way this sort of two-prong lattice approach looks on this collar. All right, so look at that. Our top crust is sort of nice and neat and inside of here, okay? But we're not finished yet. We gotta do something else to make sure we're home free, all right? Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I have a bowl and I have an egg okay this is one of the only ways I'll eat an egg <laughs> is through an egg wash all right I'm gonna add some whatever you got like water or cream or whatever you have to this I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here and uh, I'm gonna just gonna get this mixed up good with just um, the egg and the water and I'll be right back all right, and I'm back, y'all. Told you I was coming right back. Let me see. I had a pastry brush somewhere around here. I don't know if I still have one. Probably not. All right, let's do this together, away then. Okay. Now, you can buy a pastry brush. I had one. I just don't know where it is, right? And we're just going to, you know, brush the egg wash over the top with a pastry brush. I don't have a pastry brush. So, the next best thing are clean paper towels, okay? So, if you dab in your egg wash, you can then dab right on top of the dough. And what this is, is sort of an insurance policy that our peach cobbler is going to bake up nice and golden brown. And we're going to make sure that that crust looks really good. Because remember, this is more than just about taste, it's also about how it looks. I mean, part of the deal is you eat with your eyes as well, and you really want, you know, what you eat to be as lovely looking-wise as it is tasting-wise, okay? So there we go, that's done. And I'm gonna do one more thing. All right, I have, they have it, it's called either like turbinado or demerara sugar, and it's the thick sugar crystals that look like this. Let me show you. It looks like this, okay? Really thick crystals that look like that, all right? What we're gonna do is sprinkle that right on top of our cobbler, just like that, okay? A nice, generous sprinkle, just like that. All right, and that's good. Now, my oven is preheated right now to uh, 350 degrees, okay? My oven is preheated to um, 350 degrees. I'm gonna put this on a sheet tray first, right? Because this will bubble over on you. And what you don't wanna do is screw up your oven, okay? So I'm putting the sheet tray here and I'm putting the cobbler on top of the sheet tray, and this is gonna go off into the oven. The oven's preheated 350 degrees, okay? Now, 
I don't have one already ready, okay? So this is the one that you're gonna see in the photos, um, on social media. So we have to let this bake off in the oven, okay? Till it's nice and golden brown. Remember the peaches are already done. Okay, so we're not cooking anything else except for our dough. So this goes in about 30, 25, 30 minutes at 350 degrees. All right, I'll make sure I post the finished photo on um, Instagram stories. So make sure you guys are following me on Instagram. It's very simple to find my Instagram. It's Darius Cooks. Okay, and then also I will write up the recipe for you along with the photo, and I'm going to put it for you at DariusCooks.tv, okay? Remember, if you want to grab a cookbook, you can do that by going to DariusCooks.tv. Uh, if you want to go with us to Costa Maya and Cozumel, Mexico, for our Dehive family reunion, you can do that. Go to DehiveStrong.com to register. Uh, payment plans are already starting, so you can come and hang out with us. Last year, we had 400 amazing people from all over the country. We had a fantastic time, all right? This is going to go in the oven. I'm going to come back and do a few more videos for you, all right? I'm going to clean up my kitchen, and I got to do my lazy braid short rib recipe for you, and I'm also going to do my uh, southern fried pork chop piccata. So you do have more recipes and more videos coming in a few minutes live, Okay. Let me just reset and get ready in the whole bit. Remember, food is my life. Life is my food, y'all. Until next time, like a few minutes, <laughs> I want to wish you happy cooking from my heart to yours. Bye, y'all. <laughs>